Aren't they gorgeous? Guys, today what I want to show you and share with you is three different ways that you can propagate, specifically for succulents, and it really is simple, and I want you to give it a try at home, because once you get started, you're gonna to want to make more and more and more. Okay, so the first one is going to be the simplest method, which is taking cuttings. So this here is mommy. This is my mother plant, and this is where I'm gonna be harvesting off my cuttings. Um, folks, there's several ways that you can do it. Um, I like using these things because I get really good precision. Yeah, you guessed it. It's, a, it's actually a plant uh, surgical knife. It's not a human surgical knife. And you can pick these up at your local um, nursery. If not, if you don't have one of these things, then you can simply just use a really good pair of sharp secateurs. Uh, make sure they clean, make sure they don't have any gunk on them from anything previously cut, because if you've got a disease on there, it's going to spread to here. And all we're going to do is just cut off a few of these little guys. Now, important, it's not about size. You don't want big cuttings, because big cuttings, large cuttings, mean that you're putting that part of the plant that you're now trying to force roots out of under immense stress. So small sometimes is actually better. And what I do is I normally just have a tray like that and then I simply just pop them into. And take as many as you want. Right, that should be enough there. Right, next up we're going to just prepare these. And with plants like this that have a lot of whirls around them, all we want to do is just open up a bit of our stem. And now you see we've just got a little guy there um, the stem part, and that's all that's going to go into our growing medium. It's as simple as that. Right, those little guys are prepped. Now we're going to get down to our mix. So in this mixture here is, this is the brown part. That is the akadama. Now, if I take the akadama, you can see that it is basically a type of clay that I can actually just break up. And this helps with the moisture. The pumice, which is the paler one, this one is very, very light and it's really hard. You, this never breaks down, whereas the akadama does break down. But as a mixture, I use approximately two thirds of pumice and then a third of the akadama together, which means that I've got a really well drained soil, medium, growing medium, in order for my roots to be able to develop. And that is what I'm ideally wanting. So into a, a little germination tray, just go some of my mix. Nice and simple. Level it out a bit and, and then we're ready. Now, a lot of people say, you need to wait for your cuttings to callus first. Now, I'm gonna use this rule. And it's not the perfect rule, but this is my rule. That if I've taken a cutting of a plant that I'm really, 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 really concerned of, that it's not going to transplant, then I will let it callous slightly. But if it's one that I know, mm, mm, yeah, I've got a lot of it, I'm gonna just give it a bash, then you go for it. I literally just take this guy, and all I do is I just pop him in there. If you are a bit concerned about it not callousing, the other way around it is that once you have planted them all, just don't water it for a day. And then of course, never forget the name and the date that you did it. And then this, guys, must go into a well-lit spot, not direct sun, because it's obviously gonna dry out really quickly. Keep it well watered. As Soon as you see it drying out, make sure you give it a good watering. Next form of propagation is leaves. You're going to be using exactly the same mix that we did earlier. So we pop that into our tray. Now, the trick here is all about timing. And once again, I'm going to give you two options. I'm going to say one that you could have picked your leaves earlier, like as in a couple of days ago or even a couple of weeks ago, and left them in a dry spot, not in direct sunlight, but just in light. But it's at this point when they start, do you see, sending off those little, little roots that we want to get them in. But I will tell you one thing that I have learned to use and it is absolutely amazing, 
is just little sticks. I take these little sticks and, and I pop it there and then take my leaf and pop them there. It just helps to hold the leaf up. Okay. Okay. Next step, and this is the game changer. I promise you, what we do is we take a little bit of vermiculite. Now it has amazing moisture holding capacity. It can hold at least 10 times the volume in water. And the biggest problem with these little guys when we plant them out is drying out. So all I do is I take a little bit of the vermiculite and I just top them. Name on, into a well lit spot, water it, and in a few weeks, <laughs> we're gonna have more babies. And the third method of making more of your plant children is of course division. Now that depends entirely on the plant, if it's a clump forming, if it does send up suckers, and you'll be able to identify those. You know, if they start growing, growing, growing and start climbing out the pot, well then you know it's one of those that grow by division. This is a little Hawthia. You can see it's really, really clumped up here. Um, lots of lovely, good white feeder roots, which is what we want. And all we're gonna do is gently tease it and then, we want to go about breaking it up. Now, people get very stressed out about this and they like examine it. And, and Guys, just simply grab from the outer edge, grab it, and what I normally do is I just go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and you'll start feeling it coming loose. And then you'll hear a snap. And that's okay, because we're breaking off some of the roots. Obviously, it's got to break off. And then you pull it out gently, and there we have it. Look at that, all those roots, and look at all those new bubbers that are coming. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, what I am gonna do is, if it is flowering, like this guy is, I'm taking the flower off, because I want the energy to rather go into root production, rather than concentrating on the flower. Now, at this point, you can either use your original mix that I have been chatting about, or you can use something like this, which is potting soil, mixed with a coarse silica sand. So it's a rough gravel, in other words. You can use either or. So let's do a bit of this. And we take one of our babas. Now, if you see the roots, have a look here. Where it gets darker, it means it's a much older root, not as active. So if the roots are too long, as in this case, you can simply just break it off because you don't want to end up trying to fit a plant like this. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's a bit absurd. <laughs> so, okay, so we just pop them in here. And then what I like to do is, I like to hold the plant and then just feed your mixture in. Give it a bit of a tap. And well, folks, you get the idea. One plant has the ability to make so much more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight babies out of one. I've got a lot more potting up to do here. I hope you get the idea and go on and make more.